All right, well, welcome everyone to Energy Efficient Homes Guaranteed. This course is brought to you by the Green Home Institute. The Green Home Institute is a nonprofit with a mission to empower people to make healthier and more sustainable choices in the renovation and construction of the places we live. Today, I will be your moderator. My name is Brett Little, and I am the program manager here. Uh, as always, uh, our courses are typically approved for multiple continuing education units, including our own certified green home professional in the energy section. Uh, and this section uh, session actually is approved for AP Homes credit for LEED. And then also AIA Health, Welfare and Safety, which may make it applicable to your state-based design or contractor license. Um, not a new membership benefit, but an update to an old one that we've had going for quite some time. Uh, basically, by becoming or being a Green Home Institute member, uh, our friends over at the Energy and Environmental Building Alliance, EVA, are also extending all of their benefits to you. So you almost get double membership. It's hard to believe double uh, membership just by becoming a member of GHI. You will thus then become a member of our friends over at EBA. So many different benefits. So check that out um, on our website. And then once you register, you'll get access with the details on how to do that. Before we get started, a huge thanks to our top tier sponsor, uh, Mitsubishi Electric. They're definitely gonna help you guarantee your next project is energy efficient. Using mini splits, some of the most efficient uh, air source heat pump systems out there uh, that will take uh, warm air out of the outdoors in the winter cold air, move it out in the summer. It's just super efficient. It's hard to top mini split systems. Ductless mini split systems are coming out. These are really, I think, going to be the future because they kind of have the best of both worlds between a full mini split system and a ducted mini split system as far as cost, duct work, testing that's involved if you're getting green certification. So they also have um, some very energy efficient ducted mini split systems you can use for your next project. And then of course, ducted mini split uh, uh, or uh, duct, uh, fully ducted air sort heat pumps. Um, you know, uh, for me, I have one of these installed and uh, you know, I made it through the, the dead of the cold winters, right? Uh, these systems, they actually work. I've got the hyperheat system. So that makes sure it, it works down to the super cold temperatures. Uh, and you can really just swap out an old gas furnace. That's what I did and put in my ducted system. Um, again, otherwise, there have choices for multifamily uh, 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 setups like a VRF, which can also be used uh, as an ERV or energy recovery ventilator. And then also they have um, uh, systems that can be used to simultaneously heat and cool different rooms around homes or offices where there tends to be heating and cooling needs. The mini splits also have the dry mode, so you can set your system to that to remove humidity when there's not so much cooling demand. And training, you know, oftentimes we just see the amount of need for training out there. And Mitsubishi just launched some new training uh, all across um, the country, some different training centers to help train heating and cooling contractors on the importance of these systems and how to start installing them. And then they can receive these diamond contractor ductless, ductless pro and be listed. So if you're looking to have someone help you install a system, you can check that out. And they just introduced their uh, new system, their new uh, 8,000 BTU multi-position air handler. So getting super small when you've got those super energy efficient type homes. And lastly, uh, good news with the Inflation Reduction Act starting in 2023, you're talking about tier three heat pumps, which Mitsubishi has, getting up to $8,000 uh, in upfront rebates and the electrification work that might be needed in existing homes to uh, uh, upgrade the electrical service lines to make it work. You'll have to check with your local state representative um, energy office to determine what these will be in 2023. Um, so check out MitsubishiComfort.com. Another way to uh, guarantee energy efficiency in your home is to check out our second tier sponsors, Ava Windows. They've got up to R7 um, factor on their windows, and they've got aluminum windows, which have recycled content, which might help with other sustainability goals. So um, before we get into our session here, energy efficient homes guaranteed, I wanna remind you that by doing a lot of these things, um, you're going to help achieve uh, LEED goals uh, on your project if you wanna aim for LEED certification or our Green Star program or another certification. So it's actually required that these things we're gonna be talking about today uh, be achieved. So 
Energy Star uh, certification is not required for LEED, but you need to come and stop just short of getting certified by documenting everything and having it completed properly and verified. Um, and that means ensuring you have a HERS index rating, which we're gonna talk a little bit about as far as how these guarantees work. Um, so that's a bare minimum requirement of typically having around a 80, 75 now um, for a LEED certified project. Um, and then moving on from there, the further you can guarantee that energy rating even lower, uh, the more points you can receive in the Lead for Homes rating system to get to higher levels. See under V4, you can get up to 29 points. That's typically used for multifamily housing. And then under the new single family version 4.1, which is coming out with a new checklist uh, I'm excited about next week, which will be helping get the word out about, you can get up to 36 of your points um, just by, again, having these lower energy ratings, these better energy ratings that we're going to be talking about today. Also, when it comes to Energy Star, there are some boosted um, through the new legislation uh, uh, tax credits that we're going to briefly be talking about that are related to Energy Star certification. So that is enough for me. Um, I'm going to hand it over to our speaker, Lowell Hayes here, who's going to take you through these opportunities and show you um, what benefits there might be. So Lowell, please uh, take it away. Absolutely, thank you, Brad. Uh, good to meet everyone. I see a, a couple of familiar names on the participant list with a lot of new people. Uh, so it's great to meet everyone. I'm gonna share my screen real quick and then and jump into a quick, a quick introduction. So thanks everyone again for joining. Um, as, as Brett mentioned, today we want to talk about energy efficiency and particularly the idea of guaranteeing it. Um, not, a, not a new concept, some of the pieces we're going to talk about, um, and, but, but many of the, of the components, the, the main point being, how do we make sure we can tell an energy efficient story to homeowners, home buyers in a way that, that they can grasp and understand the value of the investment energy efficiency that we're making in our homes. Um, and so that's where uh, where our company really comes in. So just a quick background so you kind of know who we are and where we fit in this world. Uh, our company is called Maverick Warranties and Insurance. We're a 30 year old company. Um, I was originally bond, founded under the name Bonded Builders. We specialize in working in new home construction around new home structural warranties and other types of contractor risk management. Um, and really we exist focused primarily on serving home builders and all their needs. And that's how we ended up in this, in this space. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, the energy guaranteed products and concept of that in a little bit. Um, but from a company perspective, that's what we do. I joined the company a little about a year and a half ago and I worked in a variety of different sectors before that, uh, but grew up in the home building business. So um, a lot of what we're talking about, um, making the right material decisions or things that uh, I've been around my entire life uh, and figuring out how to make sure we can tell a story of the, the decisions we made in the design and construction process and the impact to a homeowner over a 5, 10, 15 year period are things that, um, again, that we grew up, um, I grew up all around and so it's near and dear to my heart. So that's who we are as a company. But today, again, we want to talk about uh, starting at the basics on a couple points around energy efficiency and new home construction and, and the idea of a guarantee. So I know we've got people coming from a variety of different educational levels here, and I love seeing in the chat sort of the introductions on where people are coming from. Keep that up. Um, I'm sure there's some people here who actually may be certified first raters and, and know the stuff forwards and backwards, and would actually love for some of you to, to jump in throughout this and provide you know feedback and input, and some people that'll be learning about it for the first time today. So we're going to start at the basics on just what is a HERS rating? Because that's really the fundamental input that goes into, uh, from our perspective, goes into an energy guarantee. Um, and then we're going to work up from there. So talk about the value of the HERS rating, the benefits of it, and then where, where the guarantee steps in. Um, before I jump in any further, any questions or, or other agenda topics related to this that anyone wants me to touch on? Well, you know, there was a, just some specific question that I think, you know, you'll probably end up cover or we can get to at the end about, you know, 
what are the costs of these guarantees and sure. you know, whether they're um, you know how how they how they uh, pair with actual real world consumption data. Um, so I think you're planning to get to those, um, yeah. but I invite our uh, person who asked that question if 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 he needs further clarification later to to chime back in. So perfect, perfect. So uh, let's just start off again. You know, at basic level, you know, what is a hers rating? Um, so hers rating is. In many ways, it's a scorecard for energy efficiency in new home construction. Um, ResNet, which uh, founded the HERS system, and as you can see in 1995, um, created it really as a way to come up with an objective score to determine for two homes that are on the same street or two homes designed in a similar area uh, that may look the same on the outside. What? How do we understand the energy efficient expected performance of those two homes. Um, and, and how can we say, you know, how one home is gonna perform in terms of usage of gas and electric versus another home. Um, and so a fundamental breakthrough in coming up with, with an objective score. Um, to receive a HERS rating, you can see on the left, what is called the HERS index, which is that scorecard and it ranges uh, from up to 150 all the way down to zero, which is obviously, I think for many people on the call, our goal of seeing homes that could actually be a zero energy home. Um, but based on that score, uh, the HERS rating produces not only a number on here to compare two homes, but also produces an expected energy consumption for that home. Um, in, in that system alone, uh, those ratings are provided by certified HERS raters um, who go through a course with ResNet and receive uh, approval and then can then conduct those inspections on behalf of either the homeowner or the realtor or the builder and provide, again, this, this type of information on the, the quality of construction of the home. Um, the HERS system provides an incredible amount of of insight and transparency around the home costs about fifteen hundred to three thousand dollars, depending on where you are and who you're working with, uh, in order to get uh, a her score. And and what's really, I think, important about hers again is that it begins the process of figuring out how to quantify the investments that we make in construction. So, with different levels of um, different programs that ResNet has put together, different levels of, of HERS scores. Uh, each, each of those alone has really strong positive return on investment. Uh, you can see down here some data on average scores. So the, the average score for a single family home in 2021 was a 58. Uh, average home reviewed was 3.7. Um, and when we, the in average savings that uh, a home that, that followed the recommended steps provided by ResNet was seeing almost $800 in energy cost savings. And, and I think all of us probably understand that energy efficiency is an investment up front that you see return on the, on the end. But the point being that there's real cost savings to people when you, you make the right design decisions up front. And so what, what we believe is that overall energy efficiency and it obviously comes down to specific decisions, but it's a great investment. Uh, but like most great investments, you've got to be able to quantify the return on it. Um, so let me back up a little bit further. Um, you guys have all this information. There's some, some more data, and I highly encourage anyone who's interested to go to the ResNet website and understand a little bit more about the sophistication of different recommended programs that they provide. But um, they're there's many small investments you can make in construction that, that end up saving homeowners significantly on energy bills in the future. In fact, um, you know, upwards of, like we said, $800,000, dollars on a given home per year. And the HERS system is taken off and, and uh, is, is really, uh, I would say the gold standard for new home construction uh, ratings all over, a third of new home construction in 2021 received a HERS rating. Um, 
that's a 4% increase and the ninth straight year of increases you can see here. That means there's over 3 million homes that have received a HERS rating in the lifetime of it. Um, it's a proven system. And, and that's really where, you know, what has given us confidence to step in as a warranty company and partner uh, with HERS. Um, what I think is also interesting is that there's a saying that says anything that you can quantify, you can actually, you begin to incentivize and then you can drive performance. But you can see the fourth data point here is that since 2013, we're actually seeing the HERS ratings to decrease. And I'm sure that's not entirely because of HERS, but HERS clearly has played a role where we're now able to actually compare, obviously those scores between two different homes and, and builders are making conscious investments in their construction techniques. They're using better materials. And as a result, homes are getting more energy efficient. Um, I think you're also seeing an increase in multifamily construction in general in the new home. Uh, new home world. And so HERS has been adapting to that. And uh, you can see that almost a quarter of all HERS ratings in the last year were for multifamily facilities um, versus traditional single family. It's also a system, um, you know, this, where we've, there's been a requirement to sort of educate and, and be a missionary to builders on why HERS is so important, why energy efficiency is so important. And like any good missionary you know, project, it's all start local. And you can see that HERS system has been adopted at different levels in different states. Um, Texas major market has seen you know, over a third of all new homes end up having a HERS rating applied to it. States like Indiana, 50%. But then other states where the HERS system is yet to really catch on, California, uh, you see the Pacific Northwest, a huge opportunity to continue to push the HERS system and continue to provide more transparency around energy consumption. Um, we spend a lot of time as a company in Texas and Florida and particularly in the Southeast. So that's what I know the most about. But it is interesting to see that when you have a system like, like HERS, and again, you, you have something you can objectively show, um, it becomes something that is a marketing factor. And, and as I move on to kind of why, why anyone would invest in it, it's a critical, having a, a marketing factor, something you can point to is a, an incredible way to show off. Um, it's a great way for builders to say that my home may look the same, may have the same home appliances as the home down the street, but you're getting something else. You're gonna, you're gonna have reduced energy bills um, in the future and, and that has value. So um, what we've seen with, with uh, builders who've adopted the HERS system and who continuously uh, you know, work with HERS raters on each of their homes is that they're actually able to market that score. And as a result, they can sell their homes for a higher price, particularly in the market that we're seeing today. Um, with new homes start decreasing, you're seeing a little bit of a correction in new home construction. The ability to have something to stand out um, becomes more and more important. Uh, you know, it, admittedly, it, it's over the last couple of years, it's, homes have been moving so quickly. It's pretty much been if you can stand up the home, it'll sell itself. But as we move into a market that may be a little more, uh, a little more controlled, or billers are going to be needing to do a little bit more to stand out, uh, the HERS system is a great way to stand out. Um, it also, uh, it, it when when home buyers are coming in to uh, to get uh, mortgages and to actually get approved for the purchase of home, appraisers are able to include the increased value of the energy efficiency in the value of the home, which allows the homeowner to get qualified uh, for more financing, which which again helps builders sell their homes at higher prices. Um, you know, we all know this as well, but when you build a better home, you end up having fewer issues down the road. And so the HERS rating doesn't necessarily help uh, or, or solve the complaints, but it again gives you as a builder something to point to um, and gives you a reason to make those investments up front, build a better home and end up having fewer complaints down the road. 
And then it makes you eligible for an energy guarantee. So again, we want to kind of push that down the road a little bit and talk about it later. But by having a quantitative score, it now gives companies like ours an ability to come up with products um, around guaranteeing energy consumption that really uh, have, have never existed before. For a consumer, it has a huge amount of value as well. Uh, clearly, uh, when you have a more energy efficient home, you have reduced uh, utility bills. Uh, you can see on here a little bit of data on the actual utility bill reductions. If I'm a homeowner looking at two houses, knowing that I can I can quantify in my monthly budget how much lower my electric and, and gas bills are is really valuable. But it's also something that we've seen helps not just with buying the new home for the builder, it's something that retains value across the life of the home. So when reselling your home, it, it uh, helps the resale home stand out as well, helps the homeowner hold on to more of their value and sell them at a higher price if they decide to move in the future. So as a, as a system, it has a huge amount of value uh, for your energy efficient builders and then a huge amount of value uh, for your, your consumers who are buying those homes. And, you know, another thing that is, you know, is come into our world, and probably everyone who's on the phone's world, is the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, which in many ways could have been called, you know, the Green Energy Act. Uh, a lot of the information here is still being figured out, right? The, the bill was just passed in the last few weeks. But what's encouraging for those of us who are looking at things like a HERS rating, which does have a real cost number associated with it, is that there's provisions in the Inflation Reduction Act that require some interpretation, but may be able to help fund HERS ratings in the future. And that's a big deal because the number one reason that we hear that HERS ratings aren't adopted on every single new home is builders not believing that they're going to see a return on investment for that $1,500 or $3,000 first rate. It doesn't seem like a lot of money, but not being able to see a return on that investment is uh, what you know we've seen, again, be, be a, a, a stumbling block to pushing the HERS system further and further. Um, and we think that'll be the case even more, again, in, when we talked about what's happening in the market. As the market... Uh, becomes more competitive. Builders are going to look everywhere they possibly can in order to cut costs. And cutting out three thousand dollars on a PERS rating uh, may be one of those things if they don't see the, the return on investment. And so this market that's coming up it, it has the ability to be a hindrance or an opportunity for those of us that believe in the HERS system and want to see it more adopted. So. What we've seen and what we what we have done is a uh, or believe is the answer though for that problem of return on investment is to take the Hearst system and create a, a new category of product. Uh, find a way to take a system that those of us who are in the industry may be able to understand. Um, you know what is a sixty five versus an eighty five on the Hearst index. And turn it into something that homeowners who may purchase two homes in their entire life can actually understand. Um, it's um, figuring out how to translate that HERS rating into something that's quantifiable for homeowners is a major challenge. And we think is one of, again, one of the key, key gaps that has to be solved in order to see the HERS system adopted on every single new home construction. And then in addition to that, to see HERS ratings be pushed down significantly further towards our goal of seeing more, more homes towards the zero energy level. And so, you know, what is a new home energy guarantee? We have a product around it, but as a concept, what, are, what we believe, you know, a new home energy guarantee is, is, is a warranty product that gives a homeowner a, a belief or it gives them a, a contracted agreement that their energy bills will be consistent into the future. It's a quantifiable number where there's a, a, a commitment that while energy prices may move up and down, the actual amount of gas and electric consumption from that home will be fixed. And we believe that's really the gap 
that homeowners want to see. Again, they don't they don't spend enough time in this world to really understand what the HERS index means, but they do want to know that if energy prices stay the same, I'll spend five hundred dollars a month on energy bills. That's something they can they can value across different options. And so here's how something like that would work and how it does work with us is that first off, the builder or the homeowner commits to go have a, a HERS rater come out and complete a HERS index uh, analysis on their home. And in doing that, again, as we talked about, that will then put an expected energy consumption on the home. What happens then is that that score is provided to a guarantor or a warranty company such as ourselves um, and gives us the input to then determine um, what, what the expected performance would be. The, comp the warranty company uses that in order to come up with the expected number with a little bit of a threshold around you know, expected variations. As much as, as good as the HERS system is, we found that there can be roughly you know, a 10% range of expected performance on an, on an average basis, and that's normal. And that can be driven by unexpected usage. Um, you have some people that just use more power than other people. Uh, you have other people uh, who turn the lights off every night. And so that 10% range around the expected per score comes into what your average family um, energy consumption is going to be. But as the guarantor of an energy guarantee, the, the warranty company would then issue a contract to the homeowner, which says that if, you're, if your energy bills ever come in over that threshold number, we will come in and pay the difference. And we've seen time and time again where, for whatever reason, uh, the HERS system's fantastic, but sometimes it's wrong. Sometimes we miss, it could be part of construction, it could be uh, something. Uh, where there's a you know an opening in the insulation that happens six months a year down the road, where maybe the initial HERS score was correct, but something changed with the quality of the home and, and made it less energy efficient. And what the energy guarantee does, again, is it, it gives you the consistency. So when the bills do come in over, we then as the guarantor step in and, and would pay for uh, for the difference. And so, uh, Again, it's it's all about the consistency for the homeowner, where they then uh, know that even if even if the HERS score that you know they don't know a lot about ends up being wrong, it doesn't matter because they're not the risk taker around that. They have a committed, quantifiable return on investment for buying an energy efficient home. Um, you know, we've hit on a lot of these. That provides a lot of value uh, for the builder. Again, it gives them some way to to quantifiably show their, their homeowner, look, I've built you an energy efficient home and I'm putting my money where, where my mouth is. I'm buying this energy of guarantee for you. And, and this third party company has committed to step in if, if we're wrong. And for a homeowner, again, it's all about consistency and, and understanding without having to become an expert, how energy efficient their home is. We've been in this business for about 10 years. So we have a little bit of data to understand it. We would love to see other companies provide energy guarantee products and, and believe that they, these will become more normal over time. But these are some data points that we found from surveying builders and homeowners about how important a guarantee product can be both for helping builders sell more homes, but also for seeing the HERS net or seeing, seeing the, the HERS system adopted more broadly. You can see here, 70% of homeowners said an energy guarantee would increase their interest in buying a home. That's a huge number. And I think one of my other favorite ones here is that 85% of homeowners are concerned about their energy costs when they do buy a new home. And I know personally, my wife and I bought a new home in January. And it's one of the great unknowns when you move from one house to another. Uh, very difficult to know. You can quantify your you know, the value of your mortgage. But when you move, it's very difficult in a new home to know how much should I be budgeting for a change in electrical versus gas. Maybe I'm moving to a different part of town that I'm not familiar with. Maybe I'm just moving into a new home and I don't know actually how energy efficient it is. And so having that number built in on the day you sign up 
is is a real value for homeowners who are who are increasingly seeing higher mortgage rates and are having to make sure that what they're just, they're biting off in their new home purchase is actually something that they can afford. So, um, you know, that's our vision is that we we believe um, quantifying and guaranteeing energy efficiency is the way that energy efficiency and green building will will really become the mainstream. It's the way that we'll end up incentivizing builders to be earlier adopters of, of construction practices and materials that drive long-term energy efficiency. Um, and we, we're a company that's that's been in the space and studied the data and and actively uh, standing behind the system, the HERS rating. Uh, and so just a couple things to take home and then I'd love to answer any questions. Um, you know, first off, what is the HERS index? If you're not familiar with it, highly encourage you to go to ResNet and learn more about it or talk to anyone who is on the chat who is the HERS rater, but it is the industry standard for energy efficiency. It's your miles per gallon view on, on uh, energy consumption. Um, keep an eye out for Inflation Reduction Act information. You'll hear it either from us, probably hear it from the Green Home Institute, uh, and more, more findings on what can and what, what does not uh, qualify for, for credits from that act. And then uh, the idea of a guarantee, the idea that once you have a score, you can then create products uh, to stand behind that score. And we believe that's the translation gap in order to help homeowners really understand what they're buying. So with that, um, Brett, I don't know if you want to take questions or, or I can just start, I see a couple of the Q&A on here. I can start working through those if you like. Yeah, um, why don't we just real quick um, jump into one other thing and then we'll get into some questions. So just again, um, as a reminder, uh, you see my screen now? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so just again, as a reminder from a, a lead standpoint, um, you know, if you're able to help guarantee these savings and guarantee them uh, at a lower rating, um, for every 1% reduction from the energy baseline that you can um, get completed within your project, have verified by a rater, and then of course guaranteed, guaranteed or not, you can still do lead. There's an additional point to be had here, um, you know, all the way up to 36 points, um, you know, which typically is, uh, you know, uh, a net zero home. Um, oh, I'm sorry, that was the lead energy budget. So uh, the new construction, here we go. Uh, so again, starting at a 70 uh, scale, which is, you know, pretty much code, average home, some states worse than code, uh, all the way down to um, a 58 you know, where you can pick up a point and then you can get to 36 points for being um, a net zero home. Um, so that's how this, you know, kind of factors in with the energy rating and how it factors in with, you know, lead certification. So you have to connect with a HERS rater, obviously get that modeling done in the design stage. You don't want to be figuring this out uh, after construction because then it's harder to change it. It's harder to influence the rating, um, but get this figured out in the design stage. That way the homeowner can um, appropriately improve their budget or the builder can improve their budget and then get a lower rating and then verify that rating and then hopefully get the guarantee so that people feel um, confident you know, in the direction that they want to go. So that's just sort of the, the connection there with, uh, with LEED. So, um, but yeah, let's, let's get into some, some other specific questions here. Um, and I want to go back to one um, about uh, that someone had asked about doing your own HERS ratings. And first, I just, you know, low, unless you know something that I don't know, uh, that is, first of all, typically HERS ratings are done by a certified professional. So you can absolutely go out and get certified and, and do it, though you probably wouldn't do that just for one home you definitely want to have a business. Second, it's typical that you have to be third party. It's not necessarily required. There are some addendums you can sign and all this, 
but it just doesn't look great if you are certifying your own home because of course you're going to say it's great right <laughs> you know we're all going to say it we're all going to be a bit biased um, but the good news is our friends at and, and i'm going to ask you this question later a little so you don't have to answer it now but our friends at the department of energy have a home energy score program which which once again you have to be certified to use but they have created do, do it yourself sort of uh, way you can look into it. And we're going to be doing a webinar on the do-it-yourself energy label for your home uh, and how to do that, why to do that. And we'll be doing that later this year. So there's a link to it right now in the chat uh, if you want to go forward and use that. So that's the answer to, to that question. No, you not you can't guarantee your own certification on your home, but certainly you should be informed and educated on how these ratings work. Um, encourage you to take a look at least at that program um which is more um open source but anyway so you well you had mentioned 10 percent. so you're adding 10 percent to the total energy cost the hers redirects for the home and you're guaranteeing hers plus 10 percent. can you just elaborate a little bit more on how that works yeah we actually we have a uh several different thresholds either 10 to 15 percent uh depending on product and price but typically we use that again as a as a range in order to understand because you, you know no two fam families use their home the same way someone keeps the tv on all the time someone cooks at home all the time hers is obviously a system built around the, the project but it doesn't take into account home usage so typically what we'll what we do with the guarantee is we'll include the 10 to 15 percent threshold and then energy any usage above that level is what gets guaranteed yeah, and so obviously, you know, following up on that, um, someone has a, a great question here. You know, obviously, I could see um, energy use significantly being increased um, if things are added on down the line, like right. uh, a hot tub, which, you know, from an energy efficiency and a carbon standpoint, we don't encourage you to add it, but okay, we're not here to judge you. But let's say you go and get an electric car, right? That's a good thing but it's going to just significantly increase your load. So what happens then? Someone calls you up and says, hey, Lowell, you know what? You guaranteed me this usage. Now it's skyrocketing. What, you know, right. what the heck? So, and it's, <laughs> you know, how does that work out? Yeah, in, it, in, in situations like that, that's considered an exclusion in the guarantee. So there are, you know, specific, and I, I definitely encourage anyone who's interested in this topic uh, to reach out to us and we can share uh, an example agreement. Uh, sort of what is exactly included and excluded, but there's very specific things. An electric car is a great example. A hot tub is a great example. Uh, things that significantly change the energy consumption. And if that's the case, the guarantee is voided. Um, but I would say that in most situations, with the exclusion of something like that, that I think we all would agree, you know, is with outside of the bounds of what well, the guarantee is attempting to do, most all other situations are included. Um, and you know, in, in preparation for today, I went back and looked at a bunch of, of claims and situations that we've seen. And, and there are times where we've seen energy consumption come in, you know, 50% higher than expected. Uh, sometimes what we do as a warranty company is we'll step in and we'll, we'll learn a little bit more about the situation. Sometimes you find out there was a Tesla plugged in the garage. Um, but other times you figure out, looks, you know, for whatever reason, there was actually something missed, um, or the family just used a lot more energy than we thought. And that's the purpose of the product. And we end up stepping in and, you know, writing a check to cover the, cover the difference. I think I saw some other questions on, on well, term. Can, can, can real quick, um, yeah. I just want to do remind everybody again here that, um, if you are using the lead rating system. Uh, you are required within the HERS rating to try to capture those major energy users. It's actually required of you to do this so that hopefully then if you're doing a guarantee, you're not surprised, right? If you're right. asking your client, hey, are you doing a pool, a spa, a heated driveway? Cars, actually, maybe one of you in the chat can tell me if cars are getting included in HERS ratings yet or not. I suspect they're going to be sooner than later. Um, but uh, anyway, those are things that you want to get in and, and those have to be documented uh, as well. So 
Uh, now, if you're just doing a typical HERS rating or Energy Star, I think those things are typically ignored, if not encouraged to be ignored. But when you're doing LEED, it is mandatory. So be on the lookout that we will be looking after those. But, you know, well, I, I wanted to follow up on, on, on an interesting thing you had mentioned or a concerning thing is you had said if someone adds an electric car, their warranty is chucked out. But a lot of these electric cars, you can track exactly how much those are using and segment those from the home. So are you automatically kicked out if you could, let's say in a scenario, you did buy an electric car, but you're able to track the exact, I know I can do it, track the exact data. But then you say, well, well look, there was a problem with my home. It's not related to my energy car. Are you going to come back as the warranty company, like all warranty companies do, right? You call them and they're like, well, you changed the product. So you're out, <laughs> you know, but hey, I can prove that it wasn't the electric car. Like, do you know how that might work or have you seen that? It's a great question. We've never seen that case happen. I think we've, um, and I will say, uh, you know, we have, it is very rare that we see a legitimate claim or very rare that we see a claim where the data comes in higher than the HERS rating that is not approved. Um, I, I don't have an exact percentage, but there's very few that are denied. And that's one of the best parts about this product. I think home warranties can get a really, they have a pretty bad rap and maybe rightly so uh, when you're talking about extended appliance warranties and things like that. But the beauty of hers is that it quantifies all this. And so what we can do is, is look very clearly at the monthly bills versus the expected energy consumption. Mm -hmm. and, and as long as, as long as the letter of the warranty is followed, which again is, it's not an overly burdensome list of included and excluded behaviors. There's things like you're required to maintain your HVAC unit. You're required to follow normal maintenance practices on, on your home. As long as those are followed, uh, the intention of the program is to actually guarantee energy consumption. So we maybe had, you know, since I've seen it, maybe one situation of an EV, and in that case, there wasn't independent data that showed what the consumption of the EV was, but it's something we absolutely will have to look at because you're gonna have more people, especially in the demographic who's interested in this product, who are going to be driving EVs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you had mentioned, you know, you're not getting these very many claims and, I, and I'm curious um, if you have data, aggregate data, of course, on who are the, you know, what are the backgrounds of the types of people who are typically getting these. I realize it's builder driven, but who are they building for? What is their income level? What is their demographics? You know, is everybody benefiting from this? I ask. And, and um, the reason I ask that is because maybe, I guess I'm curious if, you know, people are in a well enough financial position that, okay, their bills are off by a hundred bucks, but whatever, I don't have time to call right. them. You know, I we just, I don't have time for more paperwork, right? So do right. you think that maybe there's a there's a situation there where people just aren't reporting that they're off? It could be the case. Oh. Um, so, you know, a couple of things you were, you were talking about and that I've seen in the question. So we, we offer a variety of term links for these guarantees. So uh, everything from one year to five years of energy guarantee, obviously different prices ranging from, you know, a couple hundred dollars up to you know, several hundred dollars. Those actual price points depend on some other factors, which we could talk about with specific, you know, groups of the, the size of the home, the area of the home. Um, and again, what we're guaranteeing is the, the usage in terms of kilowatt hours, not necessarily the price. So if there's price fluctuations, you know, when we pay a claim, we eat that, but we don't necessarily guarantee what the energy bill is going to be. We, we guarantee the energy consumption. Um, but with various terms and, and price points in that range, what we found is, is a, really any builder who considers themselves a green builder, this is a win for them. Uh, the price point, it makes sense to invest you know, 250 to $500 in an energy guarantee. The builder is usually paying for this, not the homeowner. And so for a homeowner, it's just an added benefit. Um, I think you would find, uh, look at this, the quality, I hope everyone can hear me. Um, well, we we've, we've find that uh, any builder who, who is currently marketing themselves as a green builder 
is really you know the person who's going to adopt this because most of them back to the translation gap they're really looking for some way to help their homeowners understand that i'm not building the same house as the, as the builder down the street and that's really where we stepped in as a, as a company in partnership with resnet and put together this program was in order to figure out how to close that translation gap for builders who want to use the her system but don't just want to put money into something that their homeowners aren't going to buy. Um, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, one question I have is, uh, you know, the, 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 the kind of turnover, right? Um, you know, people are selling their homes faster and faster, it seems, or at least that was the data prior to everything going a little crazy. Uh, but, uh, you know, are these guarantees turned over to the new buyer? How does that work? You can sell it and say, hey, look, this is in place. So you can trust this weird number we're handing you, right? You know, it's not right. just me saying it. It's not just ResNet saying it, but now there's another entity saying it. It's 100% transferable. And that's where we say it not only does it provide value for the builder selling, but as a homeowner, you're getting lower bills. And if you sell your home within the term of that energy guarantee, yeah. you can pass that on as well. So it helps with resale value. Yeah. Um, now, you know, there's no doubt that um, things are getting more extreme. I know the HERS rating attempts to normalize for normal weather, but unfortunately, um, normal weather is becoming not normal anymore, um, especially we've got massive heat waves that, you know, uh, many of us are probably suffering from right now. Uh, in China, you have a situation where you have like, what, I don't know, I don't, a month of heat waves. So what happens in the instance where you know, is it sort of that clause, right? The act of God kind of clause <laughs> where, yeah. oh, you know, there was an extreme heat wave and you used way more energy. And, but that's just, you know, we can verify that. And so that's clearly the, the reason it had occurred. It, how does that work out? Yeah, um, it's, a, it's a great question. Uh, you know, we, we probably should bring someone in from ResNet to talk about how they're adjusting uh, their HER scores over time. Sure. Um, and so, you know, from our perspective, we, uh, you know, we're constantly monitoring the data to make sure that our, our guarantee is is a good program. Um, but we found that the HERS system has been able to be adapted and adjusted enough to stay on, you know, to stay up to date with changing weather conditions. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, and what I meant to more say is that in the instance where you know you 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 just had an extreme usage for yeah. whatever maybe a summer and somebody's bills went up by 10% and they tried to call you and say well our bills are up 10% are you also checking weather patterns you know what i'm saying is that something yeah. that yeah. Being um you know absent some type of an act of god type situation yeah. um, that's the whole point of the guarantee Okay. Really, it, is that it, it allows you, it controls for so many variables that as a homeowner, I can't, I can't control. Yeah. Um, you know, I should have said this before, you know, what we would love to see the future of guarantees become, and I see, I saw a couple of people in the chat talking about building net zero communities, is imagine a world where you could sell a home, where you could guarantee to a homeowner, they would not have an energy bill. If you combine building practices to get to net zero with a HERS score and a guarantee program, you could actually accomplish that. And to me, that's a really exciting world being in the construction business. That's something that would really stand out and I think would drive more and more green building practices. So so is that something like that's a, a wish list or is that really, hey, if someone comes to you all, for example, with a HERS of zero, you can guarantee that that or negative right you know you can guarantee that yeah i mean it, obviously we have our threshold so today it's not zero. Oh, okay uh, but we would love over time to get be able to get our data more and more refined to where you could actually put a, a no energy commitment on a home but even for you know for a zero hers rating you could make a guarantee that the energy bill is going to be tiny right, right? it's going to essentially be essentially no energy consumption in that house yeah. Which is which is pretty close to that, but over time, as we get more and more sophisticated, that would be our vision. Yeah, or, or an energy positive home that 
generates cash or whatever. So right, yeah. exactly. Um, there was another question in here uh, about uh, the HERS rating calculating carbon. So yeah, I just wanted to remind everybody, um, you know, the, the 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 HERS number itself is a number. It's meant to simply communicate quickly uh, in relative comparison um, of another home how efficient it is. And it's actually per square foot, believe it or not. Um, so it is a bit misleading because we can actually have larger homes that have lower HERS ratings than smaller homes, but use magnitudes of more energy. Right. It's a little bit unfair to um, our right-sized homes. So that's something worth noting is that it might, you might, you know, you know it might be misleading. So that's where we always tell people so, to sort of peel back the onion a little bit. And then you will see there's like 10,000 reports that your HERS rater can give you on anything you want to know on how much energy it's going to use per year, which is where your guarantees come in, I would imagine. And then also uh, carbon, which it tries to get the carbon accurate using EPA data to the location. But if you want to make sure it's really accurate, you can take, uh, well, gas, natural gas or methane gas, fossil gas, whatever you call it, uh, is usually the same. Uh, but uh, there could be different types of uh, other energy uses like oil or electric. It's going to be very different to do your, down to your utility level. So you might want to get your utility uses, you know, your, your utility company's energy per use and then do the calculation yourself. But then also you have to consider the fact that you're probably part of a larger grid. I'm part of the MISO grid. Um, so, you, you know, I like to use MISO data, right? Uh, you might be part of ECROD or whatever grid you're part of. There's all sorts of things. So anyway, HERS does attempt to do a carbon calc for you. It's very important to get carbon down. And so those things are going to have to take a look at the reports if that's, you know, important to you. But obviously you all not guaranteeing carbon, uh, but guaranteeing, you know, cost, right? So, which they usually do go hand in hand. You know, right. if you have lower costs, you should have uh, lower carbon usage. So um let me try to see what other, well, before I get to, you know, other questions, I know we are getting uh, near the end here. So I just want to um, briefly uh, remind everybody again, that these session, this session is getting recorded and uh, you will be able to um, play it back if you wish and catch it or share it at a later time and you can do that i'm trying to pull this up here you can do that uh simply just by uh going to our youtube channel and you can subscribe there as well and you'll get an instant update when it is available to watch rewatch, uh share however you like if you're watching this in the future uh not right now but on demand you can take the quiz with an 80 percent passing rate uh, on our thinkific for gbci channel and then you will receive your certificate for those of you watching this live, again, certs at gutenbergcerts.com. Mark that as safe. Wait a couple of days. You'll see your certificate come, uh, assuming you've been logged in appropriately and you've been here um, for, the, for the whole time. And again, a huge thanks to um, our board of directors, our volunteers, our executive director, Jose Reyna, and all of our top tier sponsors, Mitsubishi, uh, Reem, April Air, and everybody who supports our work and allows us to continue to do these um, sessions. Uh, you know, Lowell, I wanna talk briefly before we wrap up about existing homes. You know, people can clearly go in and do a renovation and they can do things like a HERS index or um, in many cases, we find it better to do the home energy score or now with the new Inflation Reduction Act, there actually is a, uh, and I just, I'm surprised, this has been around since 2014. I didn't even know about it until the act passed but they've decided to hitch their wagon to a uh, to a, um, a BPI standard uh, that I'll post in the chat for you all that actually uh, you know takes aggregate utility bills and tries to um, uh, forecast them out 30 years in advance and guarantee energy savings that way. I just posted a link to that in the chat from our friends at Snug. But um, can you guarantee existing homes? Is that coming? What can be done there? Is it just too complicated? No, anything that has a HERS rating, we can guarantee. Uh, so again, like renovations you talked about. Uh, our, from our perspective, anything we can quantify is worth us looking at. Uh, 
we haven't moved into creating guarantee programs for other rating systems. Like you mentioned, there are other systems out there, um, but we're, we're, we'll, we're open to it. Um, we found a great partnership with the resident. Uh, mm. When we, over the last decade plus that we've spent developing this program. Um, and so they've, they've been a phenomenal partner in helping us understand the data, helping us be comfortable with obviously the financial implications of setting up a guarantee program. Um, but mm. Oh, we're always open for other types of partnerships with other rating programs. Yeah, great. Um, and, uh, you know, some questions here about where the, um, the appraisal, the green appraisal addendum might come into all of this. Um, have you seen on your projects any involvement in that? Does something like this help with the appraisal addendum? Is it something you haven't been involved in? You know, I personally haven't been too involved with it, but um, I'd be happy to talk to you over that a little bit more. Okay. Yeah. So the, for those of, you know, who, who don't know, there is a training for appraisers to be basically green certified. And then the appraisal Institute has released an addendum that helps walk them through energy and green features of a home. So if the builder um, has a HERS rating, this can be attached to the appraisal file. Now it doesn't guarantee that the appraiser will even look at it or even acknowledge it. Um, but, uh, you know, if the appraiser is green certified, they're more likely to be interested in it. And it doesn't mean they'll find any value out of it. And even if they do find value, it doesn't mean the underwriter will care about it. And even if the underwriter cares, it doesn't care about it, it doesn't mean the lender will care about it. So you can see the barriers we're up against here. And it's good to see that, um, you know, these energy guarantees aren't reliant upon that because <laughs> That, right. that, you know, but it does help if you're trying to fund the project to get a lower HERS rating, you would need that uh, cooperation from your appraiser, your, uh, from your um, underwriter and from your lender to help boost your, you know, your, your client's borrowing power to pay for this kind of stuff. So, as you know, especially these days with, um, with, uh, with uh, interest rates so high. So, um, and just, you know, briefly, what about multifamily housing? Are you helping builders guarantee, uh, you know, these units, especially I think of like renters, you know, a lot of times they just don't know what they're getting into and how, and I know a lot of renters want to make sure they have energy efficient units. Absolutely. Uh, we're seeing that, and you, you mentioned it more and more, um, you know, of construction is multifamily more is constructed with the intention of renting. I actually I kind of agree with what you're implying there, which is that this energy guarantee, although it, maybe it's held, um, you know, handed off to, to a renter and has to be transferred to others. We've actually never issued a guarantee to a renter, but it's an interesting idea. Uh, but with multi-daily, particularly where it's being bought and sold, uh, we, we, we do do that. But I do, I believe, back to the renter's piece, I think that's a fascinating area to go. I think a renter may actually be more interested in knowing here's going to be my monthly rent and here's relatively my, my fixed energy bill, um, especially for people who, who are on a little more of a fixed budget. Yeah, so, so uh, yeah, and that's always been the problem is the split incentive where if the renter pays the bill and the landlord you know, the owner right. doesn't, they probably could care less about something like this. But a lot of landlord, you know, owners and developers or landlords do pay the bills. So in those cases, you're saying they could be the ones who hold the, That's right. the guarantee for the property. Yeah. Um, well, great. Uh, um, I don't see any other specific questions here to what we're talking about. And we're, you know, right on our time, which is rare for us. <laughs> so it's good. Good to have your day back. Um, you know, where can people go to find out more information, contact you if they want to learn more or get started with something like this? Absolutely. Um, so our, web, our website's maverickbuilders.com. Feel free to go on there and explore. Uh, you can also reach out to us at sales at maverickbuilders.com. We would love to chat with you. Uh, we This program is available across the country, so uh, across the U.S., uh, we don't currently work in uh, in Canada. I think I saw someone in Vancouver on the on the chat. 
uh, but that could change in the future. But inside the U.S., um, reach out to us. We would, uh, we would love to have a conversation. Well, great. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Lo, for your time. And thanks for Maverick for having you out. Take care, everyone. Have a good rest of your week. Bye. Be sure to check out all of our courses available online that you can watch anytime and anywhere to pick up your CEUs. Before you go, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube to get weekly updates and stay up to date on green building science courses, webinars, and home tours. Thanks again.